Good morning, good morning, good morning. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we are live. And um, so we probably don't have too many people on because I know it takes people a, a few minutes to click on and all the rest of it. But I can say good morning to Gary because I know, Gary, that you are there. It seems like you're often the first one on, which is I'm very, very grateful for. Um, anyway, before we begin the show, first of all, I'd like to say good morning to Grey Eagle, who as always is standing by my right side. Uh, I'd like to say good morning, Chris. Good morning, wherever in the world you are right now. <laughs> good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. And I'd like to say good morning to everyone else. And uh, do we have anybody, actually? Am I saying just good morning to Gary? Is that it? Is that all we've got on today? <laughs> no, 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 no. There were plenty of early birds this morning, but oh, everyone good. else is logging in. Good, good, good. Well, they missed my good morning, so there we are. Um, so it's, so it, it's, it seems impossible to me that... March is, well, we're halfway through, we're nearly to the end of March. And of course, the March hare or the March bunny, as we should say, is going to come hopping along, uh, not in March actually, but I think April. So we've got th that to look forward to and, and uh, Easter eggs and chocolate. And I would love it if some of you would tell me, how do you spend Easter? Uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about i remember as a kid um i might have been 10 11 12 in that area in that region there now easter for us was never we never thought anything of it we would go to church uh, on easter sunday and the church would always give us each of the kids a daffodil just one daffodil which we were then to take home to our parents, uh, our mother, uh, probably our mother. And um, <clears throat> But Easter didn't really mean a great deal. We didn't have new clothes. We didn't have Easter bonnets. Uh, there was none of this. Um, I, know that, I know that lots of people imagine that English villages are, you know, have the maypole and the dancing around the maypole and doing lots of, sort of uh, activities and festivities around the Easter holidays. <clears throat> I grew up at the edge of a city. We did not have a, we did not have a special dinner. We did not recognize other than going to church on a Sunday, which we used to go to church on a Sunday every week. My siblings and I, not my parents, just to be clear, my, and in fact, not all of my siblings, my sister, my sisters and I, <coughs> excuse me, would be sent off to church because that was the way of my mother having a bit of time to herself. So, um, you know, it was sort of the, and, and the, and the church, we'd, we'd talk about Easter, of course, and what have you, but never did we have chocolates, never did we have Easter eggs, never did we celebrate Easter other than that the church and the one daffodil um, until one Easter, one, well, it was before Easter. And as I say, I was about probably <clears throat> 11 or 12 or something. And on the top of our wardrobes, we could see them, but we couldn't touch them were easter eggs in a box sort of like about so big right <clears throat> we didn't know if they were for us we didn't know how they really appeared there except for my oldest brother terry who had for some reason or another taken this upon himself and thought it was a very good idea that he should buy his sisters his four sisters um, an Easter egg each. Um, we sort of, sort of knew what they were because, you know, we'd go into the local shop and, you know, to get my mother's newspaper or that sort of thing. But 
we'd never actually seen an Easter egg and we'd never ever eaten an Easter egg. And the torture was that my mother, I'm sure she knew exactly what she was doing, had put the Easter eggs on top of the, <coughs> excuse me, on top of the wardrobe. She'd put them on the top of the wardrobe several days, maybe even a week or two, I don't remember, prior to Easter. And so we had to, every time we went to bed, we would see them. And every time we woke up, we would see them but we couldn't touch them. We were not allowed to go anywhere near them and we were not allowed to ask any questions about them either. So there they sat, tempting and tantalizing until in fact, Easter Sunday, when we were finally given an Easter egg each. It was the first and the last <laughs> Easter egg that I had until I was a grown up, but it was, you know, it, it was one of those things that because it was a rarity, because we never had them again, we'd never had them before, it's, it's definitely a memory that sticks in my mind. Now, of course, when I became a mother, that the whole thing changed because we would celebrate Easter. We would celebrate with Easter eggs and Easter cakes and Easter chicks and you name it, we would and a special, special Easter dinner. Um, so Samantha grew up really knowing what Easter is all about. Now, usually, unfortunately not this year, usually um, my daughter and my grandson are here at Easter and we have the best time because we have an enormous Easter hunt, all for him the things that grandmothers do for their grandchildren, right? And um, I would, first of all, uh, leave a basket at the foot of his bed and I would write a little note in it. There might be a little gift in there as well. The last couple of years, we, we had to include uh, Apache, the puppy as well, because the Easter Bunny had to bring him things as well. Um, and so I would write a little poem, a uh, little sort of little three or four verse poem, uh, giving him a clue as to where he should look next. And then he would find the next thing. And along with him finding the next thing, there would be a little note from the Easter Bunny. And it was always in rhyme and that would lead him to the next hiding place and so on and so forth. So we, we had a lot of fun. Unfortunately, this year we're not doing it. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Samantha will give him an Easter hunt. I think she probably will. Uh, she might be calling me to ask me for some ideas of the of the little verses because the Easter Bunny is amazing because he can write these little verses just like that. Uh, and um, it's such a fun time. Of course, aside from chocolate, and Easter and good food and family getting together and all of that, of course, we remember the real meaning of Easter and why we do celebrate Easter. And I would love it if somebody would tell me, do you know why we celebrate Easter? Now, if, you're, if you have Christian beliefs, if you believe in uh, Christ, if you believe in that, you might, you, you, well, you probably would know. But there are so many people who connect to this show from all over the world with all sorts of different beliefs who have no idea about Easter and have no idea what the real celebration of Easter is all about. So, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and I'd love to hear how you all celebrate your Easter. Right, enough talking. I've given plenty, I've given enough time now, I hope for those who are joining us to join us. So Chris, I'm going to say good morning again to everybody. Uh, those of you who missed it the first time, but um, Chris, is there anybody there? We have a lot of people in the wings, Rosemary. Um, right. Some of them are sharing um, things about their Easter. Some have questions. Um, where, where would you like to start? I don't care, pick, you know. <clears throat> Close your eyes and <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So Judith says, when I was young, my family would go to church. We had already had our Easter baskets in the early morning. Yes, my mother made sure my sister and I had a new dress and it was exciting. Yes, I, I can remember that, you know, whether Easter was early or late, that was the time when, whether it was freezing cold or not, to be perfectly honest, that was the time when I would put Samantha in her new summer dress or spring dress. I would always knit her a nice little jacket to go over the top. Um, always, always when she was small, I would buy her a little pair of white sandals. So she would have white sandals, white socks, and she would look as cute as a button. And she loved it because Easter, Easter, that was, you know, that was the day she got to wear the new dress and all the rest of it. Chris, keep going. <laughs> Flory says for Easter, we usually gather with the family and have a roasted leg of lamb plus chocolate Easter bunny and miniature candy eggs and a special Easter cake in the shape of a dove covered with shaved almonds. Oh, that sounds good. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I'd love to see a picture of it. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Then we have um, Annika says, when I was young, we went to church on Easter morning too, and then had Easter lunch. I did the same with my kids and hid Easter eggs for them as well. Yes. In, in England, um, it's very hard to find them. You can get them on Amazon now, but they're not quite as good as, um, as we used to get in England. But in England, you could get Easter eggs that were this, well, even this small to this big. We would get giant chocolate eggs. And when I, I remember first coming to America and trying to find Easter eggs, I couldn't figure out why nobody had Easter eggs. What's going on here? Don't you celebrate Easter? There were plenty of Easter bunnies. There were plenty of chocolate Easter things, but never the, the big eggs. And we would have these big eggs that were filled with chocolate or filled with goodies. And even now I struggle to find uh, the nice big eggs that we, we used to get. As I say, Amazon has them, but they're usually about that big. I know that should be enough. I know, but I can remember when, you know, when my husband and I were first married, we would buy each other these big giant eggs. He would eat his within two or three days and several months would go by because I like chocolate, but I like to eat it a little bit at a time. And I, I would keep my Easter egg going for months literally for months i'm talking seven eight months maybe um almost until the time to get another one keep going chris all right jojo says my mother loved to hide eggs last year was the first time without her oh that's sad that you have to take up the you know the uh, whatever that is you have to take take up where she left off um, we, as I say, we did not have, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as, there was no, we didn't have Easter eggs except that one that I told you about that my brother bought for us. But um, we didn't have Easter hunts. We didn't have any of that stuff. But, um, you know, it's a little bit like Christmas, I feel. I feel that there are so many traditions that, you know, come from your family, perhaps, but I like also to make my own traditions and then my traditions that I have devised, then Samantha continues those traditions and then we continue those traditions with Reese and then we, and then hopefully Reese is going to continue those same traditions. So, you know, don't wait. If you, if, if like me, you didn't have an example of traditions, that doesn't mean you can't begin your own. Okay, Chris. Gary has a question. Go has for it. Has anyone ever had a dream that wasn't? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I said too. Has <laughs> anyone ever had a dream that wasn't? Yes. I, I think, I think I, I not sure but i think i know it took me a minute to 
figure it out. Are we talking, Gary, of a dream that actually was not a dream but a reality? So the answer to that is yes. I a few nights ago I I had the weirdest dream. Um and um afterwards I realized that it actually wasn't a dream, it was that I was I was going through this situation where I was being told something and I was it was being explained to me almost like a futuristic thing but it was being explained to me why something was happening um what was going to become of it and then the final outcome of it so gary is that what you mean some sort of a, a dream where it's not a dream but it's a reality where you wake up and you say to yourself i had this dream but it wasn't a dream but it was it must be a dream but no it was real it was real i know it was real but it seemed like it, that sort of thing so i'm assuming gary that that's what you mean and if if that's what you mean then it's a yes from me and uh, we'll hear from other people but um you gotta type am i right about this is this what you're asking or do you mean something else and if you mean something else you need to have a bit, a bit better explanation here <coughs> okay the next question is from Mark. He Hi, um, Mark. says, I have a question for Gray Eagle. Why are some of us chosen to be gifted with a spirit guide and others are not? Well, we all of us have. Uh, you see, here we go again with this term guide. Um, we all of us have those who guide us and who steer us uh, and many people will say for instance my mother is my guide or my father is my guide and they're not then they're, they're not wrong we all of us have our family in the spirit world who try to steer us and try to guide us some of us pay more attention than others some of us are more sensitive and more aware than others uh, and some of us don't even care or don't even realize that that's what's going on um so we all have our guides but a spirit guide such as gray eagle is a whole different thing and i've explained it so many times before so i'm not going to explain it again this morning um but um we all of us have those in the spirit world who try their very best we don't always listen but they try their very best to steer us and to guide us into doing um, what we need to do in order to survive this world of ours. So Gary answered you back. He said, yes, and you were in mine teaching. And when was this? Because you, Gary, were in mine. I just told you that I had this very weird dream and Gary, you were very pom prominent in this dream. So when did you have this dream? Inter isn't that interesting? Go for it. Not really. We, we, should, we should know. But you were, I almost called you up that day. And in fact, I think I did text you, Gary, to say we need to chat or some such. Um, but you were so prominent in that dream. Anyway, Chris, go ahead. Annika says, when I moved to the U.S., I was surprised at the Easter baskets. I view them as quite an American thing. We also have special Easter bread in my home country, which is the yeah. Netherlands. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, in England, we have, um, I'm trying to, well, actually, a lot of different faiths have Easter bread. Um, I'm trying to think what it's called in the Jewish faith, I know have Easter bread. Um, but yes, you know, we have certain types of breads and cakes that are particularly for Easter. Hot cross buns are a thing that we have in England. Oh, they are delicious. If you can make them and make them really well, or if you have a baker close by you who makes hot cross buns. And we had a song that went with the hot cross buns 
a hot cross bun is like a sort of a sweet bread bun but on the top it has a cross it, they're they're brown but on the top they have a white literally a white cross going across which is why they're called hot cross buns uh one a penny to a penny hot cross buns give them to your daughters give them to your sons one a penny to a penny hot cross buns is there anybody out there who knows that aside from me come on come on all you brits we used to sing that song but yes that's a very eastery thing for us to have chris Gary answered you saying yes, and you were in mind teaching about three weeks ago. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we need to get together and discuss it. Mm, interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I want to know, does anybody else know that song about the hot cross buns? Does anybody make hot, hot cross buns? Has anybody got a great recipe for hot cross buns? Because we're always looking for good recipes, although they're very, very funny. Uh, do you know what hot cross buns are? We, I've got Mary Lou with me today. Do you know what hot cross buns are? Yeah, um, yes, because we used to have them. My mom would make them. Oh, she did? For Easter, yes. And Just for, for Easter? Well, mostly there would be that included in the Easter And did dinner. you sing the song? No, I, I never. I can't say it. But you that. never heard it, right? Never heard, never heard that song. So there we are. Never so. seems to surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Judith says that um, they sang hot cross buns when she was a child. Oh right, was it the same song? Is what I want to know. I hope so. I think so. <laughs> yeah, we used to sing them as kids. Though we did not. <laughs> In my house, I'm sorry, I was a very poor, deprived child because we did not have hot cross buns when I was a kid. We used to sing the song, but we didn't quite know what hot cross buns were. And I, it was only when I got to old, old enough to figure it out. Uh, and um, I have made them, um, but mostly everybody, I mean, it's Easter, so that every bakery is filled with them. And you can toast them, cut them in half and toast them and have them with butter. Is that how you used to have them? Oh, they were good. Yeah, yes. really, really, really delicious. Yeah, but my poor deprived childhood was lacking hot cross buns, but it was not lacking the song. Can you imagine when you're a kid and you're singing about something, you don't even know what it is, but you're singing it anyway. <laughs> okay right okay did you also i've got to ask you this Meredith, because you see this is the train of thought now does anybody know the song the muffin man do you know the muffin man yes have you seen the muffin man yes does anybody out there chris know the song the muffin man have you seen the muffin man yes <laughs> Have you seen the Muffin Man? Have you seen the Muffin Man? He lives down Drury Lane. Yes, I've seen the Muffin Man. You don't have a Drury Lane, so how did you know that song? It was so wrong. But oh, right. Uh, anyway, the Muffin Man lived apparently on Drury Lane. Again, as a kid, I didn't even know what muffins were. <laughs> so, oh, so deprived. Keep going. I've made up for it since, mind you. I've spoiled myself since then. Chris, keep going. <laughs> Maggie says, I'm preparing for going into isolation after radiation. I put my phone down, listening with my earbuds, and I couldn't find it. And I walked around looking for Rosemary and then found my phone. Oh, good. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to help you, Maggie. And that isolation, use it as a time for healing. Use it as a time for meditation. Don't think, oh, poor me, I'm in isolation. Because remember, there are many, many, many people in the spirit world who probably are really looking forward to getting to know you better. And when you're in isolation with no distractions, that's the time to do it. So, Maggie, I know you can do this. So, you see, 
I'm giving you a whole different way to look at this situation. Um, and isolation is the perfect time to raise your level of consciousness, to connect with your higher self, and also to connect with those in the spirit, your loved ones in the spirit world. See, how about that? I want to know all about it when you come out of isolation. Chris. Jojo says, I had a reading from you years ago, and there is something you said that would happen. Uh-oh, wait, the... wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me take a breath. <laughs> Let me take a breath. It's always sort of, I always want to duck, you know, when somebody says, and, and you told me, or you said to me, I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, hope it, hope it worked out okay. But Jojo, I'm listening. But the contracts happened. I still am wondering. I'm still am wondering about my mission. I'm sorry, you got to repeat that to me because I didn't I, quite understand. I had a reading from you years ago and there was something you said that would happen, but the contracts happened. I'm still wondering. I'm still wondering about my mission. Contra- are you saying the contrast happened? The, it could be the, a typo. I'm reading it as it is written. Okay. So you have to be patient. If this is what you were told, and if you were told this by Grey Eagle or you were told by your family, just be patient. It will happen. I have great faith, you know, in um, in the things that Grey Eagle says and the things that he tells me. And sometimes he he told me something gosh years and years and years and years ago when i was a young woman he told me something would happen and he told me many things actually that would happen and one by one over the years this happened and then the next thing happened and then the next thing happened and i began to anticipate okay these things have happened but Okay, and then it seems, then it seemed as if, you know, the opposite was happening, but then uh, you realize, no, it it's happening. And I had to wait, I'm trying to counting on my fingers now, I had to wait over 30 years for the most important thing. I was told would happen and I kept in my in in my mind <coughs> in the back of my mind I was waiting and I was waiting and I was waiting and I'll, I, I will tell you uh, what it was now my daughter in the meantime had had several surgeries a couple of them life-threatening uh, she'd gone through all sorts of uh, trauma of one kind or another she was told that her fallopian tubes were blocked, damaged, what have you. She had a, an ectopic pregnancy which blew one of her fallopian tubes apart and the other fallopian tube was deformed. No chance of babies there. That was it. Nothing, you know. So, and she was desperate and crying and upset and thought she would never ever ever get pregnant but in the back of my mind was this one thing that i had waited over 30 years for and i was told 30 some years before i was told that uh, there would be i would have a boy a very unique and a very special boy that I would worship this child, that he would be my boy. And, you know, sometimes you, you can you can get a message wrong. And I thought maybe I'm maybe I'm going to have a another baby, even though I knew I couldn't, because my daughter was my miracle. And um, and it happens that uh, my her, her son, my grandson, is her miracle. Because despite 
all of the odds and having waited for over 30 years for this thing to happen and again i'll say against all the odds i have my grandson who is my boy who i worship and adore who is a very special child and by the way as we're talking about this uh some of you do know that he played at, at carnegie hall for the second time uh he's only 11 just just turned 11 uh, and he played again at Carnegie Hall, he got a first and he has been invited to go as part of the prize and his talent and everything, he's been invited to go either to Hong Kong or to Italy. Um, unfortunately, although it's a great prize, we still have to pay money for him and, um, and then he has to go with the parents. So. My daughter's really struggling. We're not even sure if we're going to be able to afford to send him because, you know, we're looking at a lot of money here. Uh, but still, this is my special child. So, Jojo, I waited over 30 years uh, for something to happen. But when it happens, you absolutely know that, yes, that was what I was told about. I'm sorry if you're having to wait a long time. Um, I was sorry for me that I had to wait a long time, but can tell you it's worth it when it happens. Okay, keep going, Chris. Well, she says, ha ha, 30 years. I am not yet, but to be <laughs> that great a singer, I will be dead. So maybe it was something about singing. No, it, it, it won't be dead. It's don't, don't, let's... We're not going to bring any negativity onto this show. Have some faith. Chris. Annika says your boy plays the piano beautifully. Thank you. Yes, he does. He really does. Uh, let's not get into that anymore because otherwise we're going to be talking about him and nothing else. So keep going, Chris. I think is this is the time to remind people that if they do not send questions into the chat room. We're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ha either either you participate or we're done. I have to tell you that my friend is here because because I've been so sick and horrible and all of that. She's come to take me to a secret place for the day. For the day. For the day. She says. So That's she's. So we're off to go somewhere for the day um, and um, she's not telling me where particularly she's with you. well it's a secret right it's a secret. <laughs> so um, so so um, if you don't want to participate I shall end the show and get off on my secret trip early so come on everybody you know let's have some questions or some comments or whatever it is it's here in florida it's the most spectacular the most beautiful day it really is sunshine sunshine and cool breezes and uh, i think it's about 74 degrees or 76 degrees something like that and it is amazing it's beautiful yes so maybe we're going to the beach or something maybe i'll be putting my toes in the water you never know uh, i'll let you know next week what my secret trip was all about um so let's do we have any comments or questions chris going on there rhonda says sending you love and hugs for healing to you judith says rosemary i wish i had your friends and yes <laughs> i have followed your comments on your grandson how wonderful i never had babies so no grandchildren i was told i probably would never get pregnant and i didn't Oh, that's, that's a shame, but you know, there are other ways uh, you can get involved with kids and uh, you can get involved with, you know, sort of, um, I think had I, I mean, I had to wait uh, uh, quite a while for, for Samantha. And then when I got pregnant, I was, my when I start talking like this, my life sounds horrendous, but it actually really isn't. It's I've had a fabulous life, but <clears throat> I was 
uh, put on a nine month bed rest and uh, talk about isolation somebody was uh, jojo was i think mentioning or somebody was mentioning maggie was mentioning going into isolation and when you're on bed rest and um you know it, you sort of have to just sit there lay there whatever and there's nothing to do and you might get visitors from time to time but most of the time you're on your own and in those days this is going to tell you how old i am in those days you couldn't plug in the tv nobody had a tv in their bedroom my gosh nobody ever had a television in the bedroom that came way later so you know i would read and i would sleep and i would get really bored and, and then i got fatter and fat can you imagine doing nothing for nine months i was so huge my shoulders looked like a rugby player's and i was you know really sort of um yeah it was not a, a great time so you know but had i not had children i think i would have somehow or another found a way to be involved with children and um you know there are lots of places that you can go volunteer um there are lots of places that you can you know even if you just go into a hospital and sit in a chair and read a story to kids um that's a great thing it's a great thing to do so you know think about that chris lorraine's wondering do you ever receive contact from the spirit world on good friday or easter uh I receive contact from the spirit world every day. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> not just at Easter, not just at, on those special days, because every day is a special day. And I think that's what we have to under understand. Some days are more special than others, but every day is, there's something in every day. If you look for it, even on the days when you're crying or you're weeping or you're in pain or you're struggling there is something in that day that if you look for it will be special to you and and that's what we have to try to do it's not always easy but we have to try to find those very very special days or the that part of a day which is special and thoroughly uh enjoy it recognize it and enjoy it so do am i contacted by the spirit world on easter sunday of course um it was my daddy's birthday uh, on the 13th um yes of course every day every day in, and in every way the spirit world is around us all we just have to pay attention and listen carefully and tune in and get those earbuds out of your ears people that's what you need to do so how can you hear anything other than you know what's going on in your ears with the earbuds so we have to pay attention we give time to give a certain amount of time in every day to pay attention and to listen all right carolyn's asking i have your book since the 90s is there a message from my dad who passed in 1982? I love him and miss him and I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Um, thank you for that. Um, which book do you have? Because there are a few of them. I'm assuming because it's in the 90s, then it must be those. Um, and um, I'm asking Grey Eagle, um, Okay, here is, not sure you'll understand this, but here is a message I think from your dad. And he, it's something about, it looks like a, a heart shape. I thought at first it was a locket, but I'm not sure. But it's something about a, a heart shaped, looks like either a piece of jewelry or I suppose it could be a ceramic something or another don't know what it is and with that which apparently you should know what I'm talking about I hope I'm not confused you with that comes oodles and oodles of love so 
something about a heart shaped something and um lots of love and that's from your daddy what a weird message but anyway that's all we we if i could go into it deeper and if i could take longer to do it uh we would but unfortunately we have to keep moving on this show keep going chris eric's wondering is your house all repaired <gasps> eric my house is perfect it's um my bathroom is finally done my every I was talking to my daughter about this the other day. I would say that pretty much everything, would you say, Mary Lou? Oh, yeah, I have to tell you all. I have to show you pictures. And maybe I'll take some photos and show you all my bathroom. Um, because I even, as <laughs> Mary Lou is reminding me, I even have a, sh a crystal chandelier in my bathroom. Um I'm a very fancy person. Uh, my, I, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, Jeff, and uh, and he was laughing about my bathroom and saying something about it looks like some fancy hotel bathroom. I can't remember his exact words now, and it and it's it's beautiful. Now you might be thinking, all of you out there, you might be thinking, well, she's got so much money. She can afford anything in the bathroom, but I have to tell you, actually, that I wish it were true, but it's not. Um, but I have a knack. I have a way of uh, finding things that are not necessarily expensive. They're definitely not cheap, but they're not necessarily expensive. And I have a way of making these things look very expensive. Would you say that's about right? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. And, I, and you had a great tile guy that did that. Too. I had an amazing tile guy. I found him in the strangest way. You're not surprised, are you? I found him in the strangest way. I'd been given estimates anywhere from 15,000 to 55,000. Do you remember that stupid quote? Yes. Uh, to 55,000 just for the tiling um and i found this amazing guy his name is oleg if you're in florida get in touch with oleg because he's stunning his work is amazing and he's he i mean what was it four thousand dollars he charged me slightly over yeah just amazing amazing so um the, the big hole that was in the bathroom course from the hurricane and all of that you know is now gone and fortunately the insurance i didn't have any problems with insurance i have a, a a really great guy who does my lawns for me and my gardens for me and um he's still battling the insurance companies having to go to court because the insurance company aren't paying out i mean people think that you know with the hurricane everybody's fine it's, it's, it was what was it two years ago everybody's fine now it's fine but people are still not fine i mean people are still suffering people still haven't to have repairs and your friend only got her friend her repairs repair done she had to wait it was it was a month months. ago yeah. she had to wait 18 months so you know just because you've got insurance doesn't mean it's good insurance and the insurance companies what the, this is what they do when it starts to get hairy for them. They go bankrupt and then they open up somewhere else under a different name. I mean, which should never be allowed. But now I'm going off anyway. Sorry. Yes, I finally, everything in that. Thank you very much for asking. And how is your house going? I want to know what's going on with you. And I got those great pictures that you sent to me uh, and I'm loving everything. So tell me how you're doing and how how everything's going. I've got four fig trees. <laughs> I don't know quite what to do with them, but I've got four fig trees. Thank you so, so much, Eric. I've got four fig trees and they are, they're looking dead. But my hyacinth bulbs are growing and looking good. Um, they might be looking dead because they came when I wasn't here and my friend who's sitting just five minutes away from me thought they were wet enough that they didn't need watering 
I suspect that they're going to come back, though. I'm hoping and praying that they're going oh to come back. And that's enough of that. No more gardening. Chris, keep going. Leslie says it was my dad's birthday in heaven last week. Oh, I nice. wish him a happy birthday. Did he hear me? I was going to, I was just going to answer you. Of course he did, but that's not my job. I have to ask. So I'm asking Gregor, did your daddy hear you? And there's a resounding, I mean, you should see how many people are in this room right now. Um, there is a resounding, yes, we hear you. We all hear you when you speak to us. So that's, so that's great. That's great. Chris. Jojo says, my dearest sister died as well two years ago as my mother. I would love to hear if they are okay. I'm sure that they, I'm sure that they are. You know, what I'm going to suggest, and, and I'm not suggesting that you just come to see me, but when you have family, giving them an opportunity to connect with you, one of those ways is by, by uh, booking, booking, either with me, booking a consultation with me, or booking with someone else. But you make sure that you know and trust them. I had a, a lady this week who had a, she had a consultation with me. And um, she was telling me, she was from Canada, and she said, I went to five or six different mediums and got absolutely nowhere. So here I am, I'm <laughs> thinking, no pressure <laughs> and i couldn't quite figure it out because she wanted to connect with her mother her mother is the strongest character was there in a heartbeat even before really before the daughter uh, uh and she was raring to go and ready and i'm thinking to myself and i did say to this lady i don't quite understand who you went to see but anyone who is a medium could not miss your mother because she's such a strong and a positive character. So when you're looking and when you're searching for people to help you to connect with those in the spirit world, do please do your due diligence. Check them out. Don't just listen to one person or two people who say, oh, you know, they're fine, they're great or what have you. Check them out. And, and... Before I have a consultation, when I begin my consultation, I will say one of two things. I will tell people, okay, there are no guarantees that this is going to work because we never know. We never know if it's going to work or not. But my standard, everything I, anything I say to everyone who comes to see me is, if it does not work, I'm going to give you two choices. The first choice is that I will refund your money immediately. Because I feel that when people are paying me, they're not paying me for my time. They're paying me for what I give to them. It's like you might take six hours in a store looking for a blouse, but you're only going to pay for the you want the blouse is what you want. That's what you're going to pay for. And when you, if for any reason you have to return the blouse, you don't say, yes, and I was here for six hours looking for it. So you owe me six hours worth of time for me looking for it. So when you go to see a medium, when you go to see someone like me, you're not paying them for the time it's going to take them to talk to you. You are paying them for the quality of what it is that they are giving to you. So I say to people every single time, if this does not work for any reason, I'm going to give you two choices. The first is that I will immediately refund your money. No questions asked. The second thing I say is, or we can book you in as soon as possible and we'll try again. At no extra charge, I'm, and sometimes it's taken three times. Uh, for someone to actually wait for us to manage to to, uh, to to connect with their loved ones, but at no extra charge. You're not going to charge me again for trying again. You're only going to. I'm only going to charge you. I'm only going to charge you if we get results, and that's what you should be looking for. So give you give your 
loved ones in the spirit world an opportunity to connect with you because if you don't give them an opportunity they not, can't do it can they however be stringent if you don't get anything then don't pay and someone who's really good at what they do will say to you as i do if it does not work i will refund your money immediately and i do it's very rare though that it doesn't work it's very rare that people will because even before i'm giving them the second option people say oh no 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 just get, we want you just keep trying because they trust that i will do my very best for them and uh use it works so be cautious everybody chris vicky wants to know once you are on the other side will you be a guide like gray eagle will gray oh, eagle be a spirit guide to someone else on this earth well i'm suspecting that we'll continue working together um at what is going to be debatable at that time um i can assure you that what's the saying come hell or high water i'm not sure i should say this but i will be with my daughter and with my grandson as often as i can be i'll fight for it i can't guarantee it i haven't been i'll fight for it but i think gray eagle and i will be doing things together chris that's i like that question that's a good question all right you had about three minutes left um okay. brooks equine says rosemary my paul's birthday is this month as well wondering if you have any messages just remember that our loved ones in the spirit world draw close to us especially at special times especially at times when they know that we're missing them um, especially at those times when we really need them around us which i think you do so the message is you are never alone i'm hearing someone whisper in my ear i will be there by your side and um um uh, and you are my angel so there you go all right i think chris that's it for today um i'm you know sort of uh, drawing it to a close up I'm, I'm going off on my surprise day today uh so i'm excited about that so let me just say to everybody thank you for thank you for joining thank you for participating because it's not a show unless you're out there helping and participating is it so i really really appreciate the fact that you are there and with me and wanting to share and to join in and and have your questions and i love i love this so we shall be back next week at the same time same place thursday morning hopefully um and um what else do i have to say to you all uh yes of course please everyone have a very blessed rest of the day remember what i said to you no matter how you're feeling no matter how down you are no matter how awful the day seems to be if you really pay attention you'll find a glimmer you'll find something special a moment in that day that you can hold on to that keeps you going because every day contains something special within it we just have to pay attention and find it and so please everyone have a blessed rest of the day have a blessed rest of, rest of the weekend everyone and i will see you hopefully next week if not before bye bye everybody bye bye